Martin here and thank you for joining me for this week's project video. I hope you're all well and you've had super creative weeks and weekends in your workshops. Now for this week's project video, uh, I thought that I would have a bash at making a shield with um, loads of texture, lots of undulating lines um, and a bit of, uh, bit of major creative flair. <laughs> so we're going to see what we can do today. Now on the lathe, Today I've got a 16 inch uh, blank of sycamore. It's about mm, about an inch and a half thick, something like that, no more than that. And um, as you may be able to see here already, I've had a go at texturing with the uh, Sorby texturing set. Uh, I've got the, the, big, the big one and the uh, little one. So I'm going to be having a play with that. I've had an experiment already on the back here just to see, um, well, just to see how it works, really. Um, I've watched the videos um, on YouTube and I've watched the DVD that comes with the set. And um, so I thought I'd have a bash. So I've had a play out here. Um, I've made a big recess for the, I think they're 120 mil to 150 mil jewels, something like that. Because um, this is quite a big piece and I want it to be able to hang on a wall so there's a recess there that can um, accept a, a, a screw or a picture hook or something like that. But I'm going to add a little bit more interest to, um, to the inside here. And I'm going to use the, the small um, wheel and um, see what we can do with it. It's got a platform on the back. What I don't like is that this knurled bit here is pointing in towards the wood. So I'm going to turn it over and turn the wheel round. So, um, so this knurled bit is pointing away from the workpiece. So I'll do. Now I've swapped that over. I'm, I'm happier with, um, I'm happier with that. And I can't turn this piece very quickly. So I've only got it down at about 500 RPM. The wheel is leant over a little bit. So let's put the glasses on, start the lathe. So the lathe's running nice and slow and I can see my center. The tool rest is quite a long way away. And I'm just gonna plop that in there. And I hope you can see that, but that's actually made quite a nice little flowery pattern in there. And now I'll do another one at a slightly different angle. I've left these two locking nuts, locking bolts, slightly loose, so I can turn, so I can turn the uh, turn the tool in the support there. Let's have a look at that. That's quite pretty as well. So I'll change the wheel and stick another one in. The set comes with um, three wheels for this tool. One with um, wide teeth, another with narrow teeth, and one that's a texturing tool. So I'm going to turn this one virtually straight up. That didn't feel as nice as the others, as the other two. But it's quite nice though. Right, I'll do another one and lean it right over this time and see what kind of pattern we get. Oh, that's nice. I like that one. I hope you can see this okay. Um, because it's just on the bare wood, it's not going to show up uh, quite as well as it would do otherwise. That's nice. I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good, good. Now I'm going to take, um, take a skew, move the tool rest in, 
and bring it up a little bit higher and just put a little border around there and probably just in the middle there as well. Just there and then just to the left of the very center piece Just like, just like that. There. I'm really pleased with that. Really pleased with it. So next, I'm gonna grab some shavings and just burnish off any, um, any of the tear out on there. I'm only going to do an oil finish on the outside and then we'll get on to the, the turning of the inside. Because this is the back of the piece, I'm not going to worry about um, adding any colour to it or, or anything like that. There we are. I, I think you can see that well enough now, the contrast in um, the contrast between the textured bit and the sanded wood. And uh, before, I, before I textured it, I sanded it down to 400. So I'm gonna wipe off the excess of that and then turn it round in the chuck and we can get on with the, uh, the front, which I'm hoping is gonna be truly, uh, hoping is gonna be truly spectacular. So here's the piece reversed on the chuck and uh, there's the faceplate that it came off of or rather there's the faceplate that came off it and you can see here the uh, the screw holes. Now the screws are quite long so um, I may well have to fill these uh, in a little while. But I just need, just looking at it, it just needs a little bit of truing up um, across across the edge and obviously the face as well. Right, that's now pretty true. I'm, I'm happy with that and um, now I've got to think about what I want to do on the inside um, of the piece and I want it kind of undulating, I don't, I don't want a, a, flat, a flat shield nor do I want just a, a straightforward dome shape. So I think what we'll do is we'll roll this edge over to create a slope inwards up to about there. We'll leave a ridge there, a scoop out, then it needs it, because I need to try and get rid of the screw holes. We'll dive in, we'll dive in about there, dive in and up, so a big scoop out of there, ridge scoop and then into a central boss, I think. So let me write on there. So that's the plan. So let's get on with that. I'll, I'm gonna use a mixture of um, bowl gouge and spindle gouge, I think. So let's start getting that rounded off to there. So I'm gonna use the bowl gouge for that. Now that's at 610 RPM and I'm not gonna take it any higher than that at all.
there's the piece all sanded down to 400. Um, I used the drill um, purely because it would have taken a month of Sundays to try and get a hand sander in there, and I haven't got a month of Sundays. Um, so I'm really pleased with how that's come out. I'm loving how that feels. Um, the fact that it just undulates and it's all nice and smooth. So because it's nice and smooth, I'm going to throw some texture on it. And um, going back to the spiralling and texturing set, I'm going to use this big one. Um, now this isn't, um, th this isn't a demonstration on using this. Um, because th this is only the second time I've used it. The first time was on the other side of the piece. Um, so I'm really just seeing how it goes, really, because I, I, don't, I don't know. So the tool rest is quite far away again. And um, I've set the lathe to 500 RPM. Find my glasses, give them a clean. Um, so I want to add a few bits of texture on the outside here and then a little bit there I think and then I'll, I'll probably leave the rest of it as is. So here's the uh, the big texturing spiralling tool and I don't know what it's set at, there doesn't seem to be any degrees as such for this um, for this tool so start over here and then stick it in I suppose now the video is said to put it in and count to five One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, yeah that's quite nice so I'm gonna make the angle a little bit steeper up to about there and do the same again. Let's see how that looks. Uh, okay, much the same. Let's change the wheel. Okay, right. Um, I know I said I was going to change wheel, at least I think that's what I said. Um, but I had a visit, uh, I had a visitor, Dave Kappa Sandon. Um, came to visit so we went off and we had some lunch and stuff and a bit of a chat so now he has uh, heading he's heading over to Axminster I can um, finish off the texturing on this um, on this project now I can't remember what I was doing I think yes I changed the wheel yeah I changed I changed the wheel that's what I've done so I'm going to do a little bit more texturing on this. That's nice. I don't want to be doing too much because the next step is going to um, the next step is going to kind of um, change it completely, and I don't want it to be too fussy. So I've got the I've got some shavings. So I'll just burnish off any um, any torn grain. Right, what's gonna happen now is, I want this to be a shield, so shields are kind of metallic-y, something like that, and um, I think this could end up looking quite oldy-worldy. So I'm gonna use um, the Metal Effects, well, the, the Modern Masters Metal Effects paint, which is the tarnishable stuff. And I'm gonna do everything bronze, apart from this ridge here, 
and the center boss and that little ridge there because I'm going to do those rust. And I'm going to use a sea sponge. Uh, this was um, recommended and I can't remember who who recommended it. I think I might have seen it on the Modern Masters website. I'm just going to dab that, being careful not to get it on the back. So I'm just going to dab that all over. Make now I've got the um, bronze paint on. It's looking really nice. I'm really liking it. Uh, now the next step is to add the iron paint. And I'm going to do this with a brush. Um, and I need a stool. So I've loaded the brush with um, a bit of the iron paint. So we'll do it, we'll do it by hand. I'm not worrying that I'm going sort of over the edges as it were, because, you know, this is supposed to be kind of um, worn, antique kind of ancient. So I'm not, um, not going to be too worried because there's still another coat to put on of both both paints so if I go over the edge a little bit I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fret there's the the um, the iron paint on the piece um, and it's drying off now I need to get more bronze on fairly quickly all over and then use the activator on it. So I need the bronze paint back again. And uh, I've put um, a piece of plywood down on the lathe bed to um, protect it because this activator stuff rusts anything that it comes in contact with um, as far as I can tell. So the piece is still on the chuck as well. I've just taken it all off as one um, as one thing. So I'm just going to smear that all round. And you, with the bronze paint, you must activate it while it's still while it's still wet. And because we're going for a a bit of a an antique ancient kind of feel to it. Um, I'm not paying too much attention to where the paint may be quite heavy, you know, quite thick or whatever. I'm literally just plopping it on. So the blue patina you use on the bronze paint and you just, oh, it doesn't want to spring back up again. So you just spray it on. I'm kind of doing it relatively haphazardly. Good. Now I need to do the rust. Now I don't know if the rust is going to affect the bronze. So we'll see. So there's the rust going on there. And the rust going round the inside. I could kick myself for being too um, impatient with it <laughs> because that's just the kind of personality I have. I'm not, I'm generally not particularly patient with this kind of stuff. I like to turn a piece and finish it in one day. Um, but yeah, you can see it's going there. So it should hopefully turn out turn out okay and it's normally best to leave this stuff overnight anyway and then when I come back to it tomorrow I'll be able to put the um, the centre decoration in how very exciting right I will um, see you in the morning Hi everybody, it's um, the morning after and I turned, uh, I turned the shield and 
I am so pleased with how it's come out. Um, the the patina of the of the bronze is a really nice, is a really lovely blue, and the rust has um, the iron paint has gone beautifully rusty, and the inside boss there is just how I want it, with nothing on it just at the moment. Now to get going with this part, um, I want to speed up the lathe a little bit. 250 RPM because I want to add a little bit of sealer to it just to help protect it and I'm going to use a plasti coat satin sealer so I need to give it a bit of a shake because if you if you um, if you can see on here where the um, where the activator and stuff pulled at the bottom of uh, the troughs there um, it looks a little bit flaky, which is fine, which is great, which is just what I was looking for. Um, but a bit of sealer will help protect that. So I'm gonna put a couple of coats of sealer on. That's darkened it down a bit, which is nice. And then we can leave that to dry and then I can get it off the chuck back onto the lathe bed where I can do the final part of the project. Um, I've left the piece on the lathe because I'm going to try and apply the, the copper paint um, to the central boss area um, using the sea sponge and try and get it nice and crisp along the top so we'll, um, we'll see. The lathe's going at 250 RPM. Yeah, that's good. Right, that's all I want to do there, and I'm gonna let that paint dry, get it off the lathe, put it back on the bed, and then um, put the final layer of paint on before um, one last spritz with the green patina. Yeah, the copper has dried and I'm now going to put the last few bits of copper, the copper paint into the into the boss area and give it a spritz with the uh, the green patina. So I need the sea sponge back and just the same as yesterday I'm going to kind of smear it in and I want to get as close to the edge as possible. Again, I'm not paying too much attention to um, how thick the paint is going on in any particular place. I'm just making sure that I've covered, covered the whole boss. I did think about gilding it with um, uh, copper leaf, but then I thought, you know, if this is going to be an oldie worldy, styly, you know, ancient, um, ancient style shield, then they wouldn't really have used, or they wouldn't have been able to get a very smooth um, copper finish. It would have been hammered more than uh, more than anything. Um, so that's the kind of effect we're going for here. And then finally, make sure that sprays, because I had trouble with the brass one. From above the copper, I'm going to do one, two, three sprays, that's it. Because I want some of the copper paint to remain like the, like the bronze has been left behind and not tarnished. So hopefully that, just those three little sprays will give it the kind of uh, patination that, uh, that I want. So I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna leave one of the cameras running and then speed it through and hopefully you'll be able to see the change as it turns green.
here is the final piece. I'm very pleased with how it has turned out. The bronze paint and the patina have taken just as I was hoping to leave a little bit of the, uh, the bronze showing and the rest of it being tarnished. The iron paint has oxidised really nicely too and has the copper in the centre. So you've got a bit of blue, a bit of red, a bit of green from the copper and stuff. It has turned out very, very nicely. And the piece of sycamore that it's on uh, as a canvas has behaved exceptionally well. And let me show you the back. You can see the texturing there um, on the back of the piece. And I think as a piece by itself, just with the texturing on the back, it would look really nice too. And uh, the texturing on the front on the, on the front of the piece has uh, remained visible for the most part, so I'm pleased with that too. Well, thank you very much indeed for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the project and uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon for another project. Please do like, share and subscribe if you'd like to see more turning videos like this and some other kinds of projects too. Well, for now, thank you very much and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.